Hello, this is Bob Gray Sr. Welcome to Ministry Moments. Every Friday, 3 o'clock Central Time, we'll come to you. Now, by the way, you can go to YouTube uh, and look up my Ministry Moments and find my name, Bob Gray Sr., and you can watch it anytime that you want to watch it. Otherwise, I would, I would subscribe to this. This is also a podcast, whatever that is. <laughs> Somebody talked me into doing it. I'm not... I don't, I'm not tech savvy, but I've got good people around me that are. But today on Ministry Moments, I want to talk to you about longevity. Now, I'm going to be looking down at a page here that I, out of my pastor's uh, of the church manual and uh, some things about longevity. Um, you know, I wrote this down. This is a marathon, not a race. And if you'll focus on the fact you're in this for the long haul, uh, it's going to make a big difference. And you have that uh, eyesight, that vision, and you see down the road and keep yourself uh, motivated every day by winning souls and staying in the word of God, walking with God, being faithful to God, uh, then you'll see a lot of this come to pass in your life. God is not a respecter of persons. He didn't love Dr. Lee Robertson more than he does you. He didn't love Jack Hiles more than you or Tom Malone, Curtis Hudson. On and on I could go, J. Frank Norris. No, no, no. Now he loves me more than you, but that's a different story. So let, let me give you something that I, I ran across. I was on an airplane. I picked up a, uh, uh, a Forbes magazine and I saw this and I was intrigued by it. Now listen carefully. Some 400 names of the most noted people of all times from all walks of life were chosen for a study that they did. And uh, on, uh, it was on longevity and success with longevity. Uh, they were statesmen, painters, warriors, poets, writers who made up this survey. Opposite the name of each person was listed the greatest achievement, followed by the date at which the individual was at his best. The list was then arranged according to decades. So let me give you those uh, quickly. Now we're talking about, we're not talking about uh, spiritual people necessarily. We're not talking about men of God, but it's relatable. Uh, for example, zero to 40, those that survey said the 1% uh, achieve, had, had achievement and success. 40 to 50, 10% had success and the achievement. Uh, 50 to 60, age 50 to 60 now, 25% of them achieved success. Uh, 60 to 70, don't leave me now, don't leave me, 60 to 70, 35% uh, achieved a success. Uh, 80, in their definition, in eight, 70 to 80, 23% of them achieved success. 80 to 100, 6% achieved success. Now, here's what I did. I added 40 to 80, added it up, and it's 83% had success. Now think about that. From 40 to 50, it was 10%. 50 to 60, it was 25%. 60 to 7 was 35%. 70 to 80 was 23%. 80 to 100 was 6%. Now, let me give you some names who, who were in it for the long haul and found success. J. Frank Norris. Um, at age 58, he held two pastors. And I'm not told when you get on a jet plane flight, but one in Detroit, and I've been to, there, and the one in Fort Worth, and I've been there. Uh, so both of them reached 5, 000, over 5,000 in Sunday school. Both of them did. That was after age 58. Ernest Ira Reveal, or Pappy Reveal, the renowned rescue mission worker, was ordained at 39, but did not begin his work till it was in his 40s, and it was in his 50s and 60s that he really made an impact for the cause of Christ. Uh, Dr. Bob Jones Sr. founded Bob Jones University at age 43. He was 63 years old when they moved the college to Greenville, South Carolina. Amazing. Lester Roloff uh, really came to his own in his 50s. John R. Rice was in his 60s. T.T. Shields became known as the Spurgeon of Canada at age 54 when he organized the Toronto, the Toronto Baptist Seminary. And after that, great things began to happen for him. L.R. Scarborough became the leader of the Southern Baptist Convention when he was 68 years of age. I could go on. I could list G. Campbell Morgan, uh, W.B. Riley, R.A. Torrey, C.I. Schofield, 
B.H. Carroll. He, 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 at age 65 through 71, he became the leader of the uh, Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, John o. Rice, who died at age 86, did not start the sword of the Lord until he was 40. He had earned three earned doctorates and conducted giant citywide campaigns, which began to happen in the 60s. Dr. Curtis Hudson, Harold Seitler, Bill Rice. Um, Moses was 40 when he went to the wilderness and uh, at age 80 when he led God's people out, out of Egypt. Dr. Jack Hiles at age 74, who pastored for 54 years, 41 of those at First Baptist Church of Hammond, took uh, uh, a small hand, hand of people and ended up with, and uh, he was running, I guess, five to 600, but ended up running 20,000 plus. And the properties grew to nine, $90 million of, of property, uh, 40,000 active church members. I mean, Dr. Lee Robertson, uh, who, who uh, at age 41 and on up, great Highland Park Baptist Church and success. Now, here's what I'm saying. You stick with it. You uh, don't look at your age. You look at your God. You stay with it and quit hopping around, get settled down, and go to work. Now, let me give you some practical points here. Number one, time is an event. Uh, there, it's, time is not seconds. It's not minutes. It's not hours, not days, not months, not years. Time is an event. It's not the Sunday school hour. It's a Sunday school event. It's not the preaching hour. It's a preaching event. So everything that you do, understand that, that there's time involved. It is an event. Um, you've got, you, you cannot wake up every morning and say, should I stay? <laughs> uh, should I go to Sunday school today? Should I go to church this morning? Should I go to, and church starts at Sunday school time, by the way. Should I go Sunday night? Should I go Wednesday? Should I go soul winning? No, you never wake up and ask yourself, should I do that which is right? You do that which is right. Just second nature. Just second nature. Uh, that's why the Bible says, be ye followers of me. It doesn't say do, it says be. It's got to be second nature to you. Second nature to you. Um, the less you do, the listen to this statement. The less you do, the less experience you'll possess, and the less likely you are to stay. A pastor in, 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 in uh, Arkansas, I preached for him Monday night, preached for him Tuesday morning. We're driving down the road. He said, Brother Gray, you've got to find me another place to go. I, my work here is done. I said, really? I'm driving down the road. I said, all of these houses, you, you've knocked on everyone. Yep, every one of them, every one of them, over and over again. I said, stop the car. He stopped. I got out. I said, follow me. I went up and rapped on the door. A lady came to the door, and I said, ma'am, have you ever seen this man before in your life? And the lady looked at him, the pastor, and he said, she said, no, no, no. I said, have you ever heard of such and such church? No, I hadn't, I hadn't heard that. Has anybody come by and talked to you about salvation? How you can know for sure you're going to heaven? No, nobody. <laughs> I said, ma'am, can I? And she said, you sure can. And so I led her to Christ. We got in the car. We're driving to the church to go to lunch. <laughs> and, and he didn't say a word, not a word. We pulled up in the church pastor's parking spot. He looked at me and said, I hate you. I hate you. I said, you, your work may be done, but their work on you is not done. And uh, so you better get with it. Now, I'm just saying longevity. This is a marathon, not a race. The longevity of it, the longevity of it. Uh, keep on going for God. I'm, I'm 76. I flew 198,000 miles last year. I have 6 million plus miles just with American Airlines. Not, it doesn't include all the others. And I've written 35 books. Got a brand new book on Absalom that's coming out. You've got to get your hands on it. You've got to get your hands on it. And uh, a brand new book coming out. Uh, and I'm, I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. We have an online college, Independent Baptist Online College. Go to it. Check it out. We've got 1,470 students, six years old. I'm busy. I, uh, I, I love the work of God. But a minute for the long haul. You cannot say to yourself, my work here is done. That's a half truth because their work on you may not be done. The ability to face and tackle problems is the key to longevity because it builds character. Let me say it again. The ability to face and tackle your problems is the key to longevity because it builds character. The difference between a Jack Hiles and Lee Robertson and you is they stayed when facing the same problems that you're facing that you're running from. And you, you know, they're the same. They're the same. It's just a different name, just a different face. Doesn't make any difference. The deacons are the same over there. They are here. 
the people that gossip, same over there as they are here. Uh, so uh, understand longevity. This, if I could drill this in your head, this is a marathon, not a race. Now you get back up on your feet, dust yourself off, get back up again and go at it and go at it. Um, uh, for the majority, it will not come together until after age 50 or older. And only if you stay through the battles. Only fullness of events experienced each day can give you a full life. Let me give you that statement again. Only fullness of the events experienced in your ministry each day can give you a full life. Impatience is the bait Satan uses to get God's people and God's men to move. If I could just freeze every church member with a, in a good church. Now, if you're in a church, it's not, well, it's no longer soul winning. Soul winning is not found in the Bible. Well, pastor, neither is pastor's salary. So I don't know why you're disobeying the Bible. That is foolish. Well, we don't call it soul winning anymore. We call it outreach. We put door hangers out. Bible doesn't say going all the world and put door hangers out. So going all the world and preach the gospel. People get saved, not doors, not door hangers, and not hours and not minutes. Okay. So now once you move, you create an appetite to get to the new instead of stay with the old. Let me say it again. Once you move, you, you've bitten into the impatience bait. Once you move, you create an appetite for the new instead of the old. Having to get away from your troubles will not cause troubles to go away. Let me say it again. Get, uh, moving to get away from your troubles will not cause your troubles to go away. You are stunting your growth every time you are transplanted. <laughs> My wife put a tree out there and the one, one planted it. And Brother Ayers, God bless him for years, he, he took care of the maintenance and transplanted that tree again. And we put a drive over in a carport on Transplanted it again. Transplanted it again. And Brother Ayers said to Mrs. Gray, if I transplant that thing one more time, she's going to die. And uh, now I'm just saying to you, you're stunting your growth every time you're transplanted. This is not a ladder to success. This is a work, winning souls, keeping people out of hell. And uh, now when you turn 40, it's often best to stay where you're serving. Stay there. Stay there. Because you've got 20, 30 years left. That's all you got. Now, and, and maybe more, Lord willing, maybe more. Uh, I'm just saying to you, stay, quit moving so much and quit pastoring from here to there and, and, and so on. The same battles are waiting for you at the next church if you keep the same stand. Um, uh, lateral moves are not of God. If you're moving within 60 miles of where you're at, same position, going there, no, 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 no. It, uh, it ought to be a promotion. Uh, to maybe from a small town, maybe to a town that where there's a lot of population, reach a lot of people. I, I, it, I just want you to get this. I want you to get this. You've got to learn to stay longevity. Uh, if the world knows that, and if they know they're not going to hit success till they're in their 60s, why in the world shouldn't you young whippersnappers realize, go someplace, dig deep and stay there. Uh, I remember when I was here, and uh, I, I, uh, two great opportunities, really, they were, they were great opportunities as far as uh, winning a lot of souls and so on. And uh, I remember calling Brother House at home and I mentioned one. He said, Brother Gray, why in the world did you run your tap roots so deep where you're at? I said, well, I was planning on staying. He said, then stay. Um, and uh, I had another opportunity and uh, <laughs> Dr. Lee Robertson said to me, is, is brother so-and-so who's passed that church your friend? I said, yeah, he's my friend. Do you want him to remain your friend? Yes, I do. The great man. Then don't take the church. He said, you put Longview on the map. Nobody even knew where Longview was until your church started booming and things began to happen. Everybody knew where Longview was because of Longview Baptist Temple. Now, please, this is so important. I would get me a board of counselors, old men. That's the kind I had come in and preach uh, for me. I wanted, I wanted Dr. Lee Robson, Dr. Tom Malone, Curtis Hudson, Jack Hiles, and, and all those great men. I wanted them in, Carl Hatch. I wanted him in. I wanted older men in. Now, you let them be your counselor. Dr. Lee Robson was on my board of counsel. Dr. Hiles was. Uh, Dr. John Rice was. Uh, Dr. Tom Malone. Did I mention him already? I'm getting old. Uh, now, I'm just, I'm just Curtis Hudson. Now, I'm just saying to you, get you some counsel, but this is a marathon, not a race. 
And if the world understood by sticking by it and, and facing the same thing everybody else faces, but we go through it, not around it, but through it, then you'll find success is waiting. And success for us is different. Success is soul saved. Success is a great Sunday school being built, training people. So the next generation has something to live for. God bless you. Ministry moments. Don't miss it. And now, if you're upset with me, God bless you. You're commanded to love me. <laughs> now, uh, let's stay with it. And you young preachers, quit changing. Quit going sabbatical. Sabbatical. Where in God's name do you find sabbatical in the Bible? Where, who in the world are you young preachers listening to? You haven't got enough sense to come out of the rain. Um, and by the way, I'll guarantee you, your standards are going down. I'll guarantee you the music standards are going down. I guarantee you the dress standards are going down. I guarantee you, you fall for that evangelical, even, I can't even say it, can I, I, evangelical uh, way of doing things, their model, and you are getting heading for trouble. Now you quit listening to people who got colored lights on a platform and all kinds of junk. You, you've gone into an attraction mode. You're trying to attract people. Oh, get back to old fashioned hail, fire, damnation, King James Bible, independent Baptist, take a stand and run with the right crowd. Uh, I'm not mad at you. I'm really not. <laughs> Longevity. Hope it's helped you. Join us every week, Ministry Moments podcast and YouTube Ministry Moments. You, if you don't want to listen, you want to just look and mute me, <laughs> you can do that. But God bless you. Saturday soul way now. This is no time to mess up. Make sure you're out there winning souls. Get ready for Sunday. God bless you. Have a great weekend.